America, 14 teenagers will die by gunfire, same as yesterday and the day before. Tomorrow, a dozen or so more will be killed. The deaths can be a suicide, accident, or a murder. The fact remains, young American kids are arming themselves and pulling the trigger. What is going on in society that is causing this wave of violence? And what can be done to stop more senseless deaths like 13-year-old Chopin Morse's? society today is it's easier to get a gun than it is to get an education. Guns have always been a part of our culture, but in the mid-80s when crack cocaine hit the streets of cities such as New York, the rate of teens killed by guns increased 77%. Drugs, unemployment, and easy access to semi-automatic weapons turned areas like the South Bronx into war zones. It's not because you want to carry a gun around here, it's because you got to. You know what I'm saying? See, we run around, we start beef because we want to. And we know we're going to get in trouble when we do it, so therefore we pack. You walking around the block, never know you catch beef somewhere, and they can just pop in your head, so you got to keep your joint on too, so you can go out and with them. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to give us a job because we're young. So we got to get money, we got to sell drugs. <laughs> Smaller cities like New Orleans, Louisiana are dealing with the same deadly plague. For the battle-hardened kids growing up in the projects here, guns are a fact of life, a necessary tool for survival in a dangerous environment where being feared and respected can mean the difference between life and death. Well, we miss y'all, homie, because you're here today, here today, on the mall. Do going to 20 different funerals make you stop and think that maybe you shouldn't be carrying a gun? Maybe you shouldn't be hanging around with these types of people? No, it made me think that I shouldn't get a gun. To protect yourself? To protect myself, so I wouldn't be the next one laying up. Nobody looking over me. Rest in peace, you're here today, gone tomorrow. you feel like the 90s are an age of violence? Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because you can't fist fight no more. So you get off or whatever. Damp it all. Nah, you fish by you beat somebody up, they gonna wanna go get a gun. It's either kill or be killed, nah. New Orleans' gun problem isn't limited to the ghettos. Middle class kids in the suburbs of Jefferson Parish are also buying guns and joining gangs. Do you think there's peer pressure to have a gun if you're a teenager well, today? Peer pressure that you got if the next man got a gun and all we can threaten by a gun. But you can't have, but you can't sit there and fight the man because you got a gun. So it makes you want to go get a gun. Did you get a gun because you were threatened or because you wanted to be cool? Mm, just kind of just like wanted to be like everybody else. What do you think the party that you go to tonight is going to be like? Are you going to carry your guns with you? Yeah, we got to. So just to go to a party on a Friday night? You gotta do it, son. Gotta do it. Can't leave him in the car because you won't have time to run to your coach. Not these days. Yeah. Yeah. At first, everything started off with just fist fights, you know? You didn't really hear about guns. They just, all of a sudden, I'm going to parties and there's guns everywhere. And then, so those people are getting shot, they're going out and getting guns, like that party we just came from. Some guy runs up to me and said, call so-and-so and tell him to bring him the gun. And I was like, did you do it? Yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> Midwestern cities such as Omaha, Nebraska are no longer free of gangs and gun violence. Bored kids are joining gangs for camaraderie and protection from each other. Some people think, you know, Omaha, Nebraska, it's just, you know, it's the heartland. It's just a bunch of hicks and cowboys and stuff. We ain't in L.A., we ain't Bloods and Chris here, but we got our own gang. Mm -hmm. Tell me about them. What, what's the name of your gang? MCG, Mad Circle Gangsters. So we just started it up because... Everybody in our in our hood was, you know, they was claiming Maple Street. And none of us liked Maple Street, so we we were gonna start up our own set to take care of Maple Street. We didn't like Maple Street. They wanna be like us. They wanna be. Yeah. They wanna be, like be like Mike. They wanna be like us. That's all I gotta say. They come down there, you know, they're like, oh, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna be accepted down in, in their neighborhood if I carry a gun. And I'm trying to get some respect for myself. 
people in the society is responsible for what's going on right now. Because what I'm talking about guns, we had, you know, it was for gang banging purposes. You didn't never get a gun to say, man, I got a gun. It was for safety, protection, and doing yours. You know what I'm saying? But gang members aren't the only ones picking up guns. I started carrying my first gun when I was 13 years old for the reason that kids were always trying to jump me and steal stuff from me. And um, they were always harassing me and I was scared so I started carrying a gun. Kids think that they carry guns in Omaha is because it makes them feel good. They think it's cool. The reason I think kids are fighting more is because of the movies and the games that we play and the news and stuff, how they show big cities where people are shooting each other. Yes, TV. It, it, Mostly. TV, that's what I think you know, TV the news, is all hyped up. The news. Uh -huh. What did you see on TV that made you want to shoot? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Colors just get me hyped yeah. up. <laughs> the movie Colors. <laughs> but don't you think that movie is trying to show you how f***ed up life can be if you're constantly strapped and you're involved in gangs? I mean, isn't that the moral of that? But they movie? highlight it more than what they show how f***ed up it is, you know? I think Hollywood glamorizes gang banging, mafia, hit men, all that, man. I certainly don't believe that film is what causes violence. It's lack of education, drugs, guns, no job opportunities, uh, falling apart of the family structure. Those are things that cause violence, uh, being abused as a child. The level of violence on primetime network TV has remained nearly constant for the past 20 years. But since the dawn of the information age, cable TV and VCRs have provided more opportunities to witness violent acts. Reality-based crime shows and ever-expanding TV news coverage have brought the streets graphic images into our homes. I absolutely believe that violence, the way it's portrayed, especially on television, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack as opposed to movies, does desensitize. Yeah. Having allegedly inspired kids to set fires and lay down in traffic, TV and film were under scrutiny in the fall of 1993. The Senate even held hearings on TV violence, hoping to persuade the industry to censor itself. I mean, Hollywood should take a little bit of responsibility, man, because all you see on TV nowadays is people getting killed. Everywhere you go, every way, you know, every channel you turn on, it's always got to have something to do with guns or violence. And, you know, it's just the thing nowadays, that's what, you know, just use a gun. You know, it's, it's always, you know, in the rap, you know, the music and all that that we listen to, that's all they talk about. So, 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 throw your guns in the air. It's rock, rock, like you just don't care. I'm not telling anybody to look up to what I'm doing or say what I'm saying or anything like that. I'm just looking to sell some records. MTV has rejected many of these videos because of their glorification of guns. But guns aren't always just image-making props. Rappers Snoop Doggy Dogg, Tupac, and Flavor Flav have all been arrested on gun-related charges, blurring the line between image and reality. Beat nuts forever, die hard, Yo, I'll shoot your moms if I have to. That's the way I live, so it's going to come out in my music. You know what I'm saying? We're not gangsters and we don't promote guns. Unfortunately, we have to carry them because it's, you know what I'm saying? It's do or get done. I think everybody have a responsibility to tell the truth. Nothing more. It's not good for the kids to see, man. Because the kids look up to that, man. Because they go to school, whatever. Then they come home and they turn on the TV and they see you. And the more you keep putting something in a child's head, they're going to pick up on it regardless. We got our own brains. We can think for ourselves. Yeah, I know, you know, I know people that listen to Dre and, you know, listen to Cypress Hill and they get all hyped up and go get gas and want to do damage with it. That, it don't really do that to me. So tell me, what do you think of rap videos? Yeah, all right. Cool. What about the guns in them? Do you think it's a bad influence on kids? No. Why not? Because they just don't see it on the TV. They see it around here every day. So we got our own videos around here. While no one would deny that pop culture is full of violent images, no direct relationship has been established linking those images to violent behavior. Reactions depend on a combination of environment and character. But in the end, each individual is responsible for his or her actions. When we come back, 
We'll look into where kids are getting their guns. Students carry an estimated 270,000 guns to school every day. One in 25 American kids say they carried a gun to school last year. Kids just can't concentrate on learning in school anymore. They have to worry about safety. Even though 7% of schools have metal detectors, like Paul Robes in high school here in Brooklyn, 55% of students say they wish their school had metal detectors to protect them. After a 15-year-old student killed two schoolmates in New York's Thomas Jefferson High in February of 1992, 41 schools, including Rosen High, began using metal detectors every day. Surrounded by crime-ridden neighborhoods, Robeson also uses electronic IDs, x-ray machines, and safety officers. I feel it's a win-lose situation, because as the student said, um, while you're in school, you're safe. But as you go outside, anything can happen, because it's a lot of teenagers with guns outside. In New Orleans, where more than one in five students believe they will be shot before age 25, Alcee Fortier High School students wear ID cards, uniforms, and undergo periodic gun searches. One day last year, one of the one of the quiet, supposedly quiet students, you know, we were walking down the back stairs, and he was running down the steps, and he accidentally dropped his gun. And I was like, man, what you doing with that? You know, you small, you quiet, you don't bother nobody. What you need with a gun? He's like, well, like, you know, I got a starter jacket and stuff, and because I'm small, you know, I got to protect myself, so he carries his gun. This student, who was accidentally shot in school, wonders if gun security measures are really effective. Kids, you know, they hop the gates every day. They can just throw the um, bags across the fence, come on into the school. And after I got shot, they had um, metal detectors for a couple of weeks, and after it just faded out. But I don't think they really take it seriously. In an area where juvenile weapons violations increased nearly 50% in four years, Students at suburban Grace King High School, where some members of the KC mob attend, wear ID cards, use see-through backpacks, and undergo random searches by a metal detector called a wand. Being searched by that wand doesn't make you feel violated? Yeah, but they have to do it. You know, that's the way I think of it. I don't like it, but they have to do it. In a way, it's like we can't be trusted, almost like we're in a, you know, our own little prison while we're supposed to be free to learn. So, at the same time as our life's being violated, so is our education and stuff like that. Do you ever bring your gun to school? I did twice. Why? I kept it in my car. Why? Because, like, last year they had, like, a lot of fights. But not too much this year. Well, can't you have a fight without a gun? Not these days. In Omaha, where in September of 93, a second grader brought a loaded pistol to show his classmates Public schools such as Benson High have no gun-specific security measures. If you want to find a gun, you, I mean, you're going to know. It's like when you go to Benson and stuff, you're going to know who's who, and this person has these in his trunk. You could possibly get a hold of them and work out a deal. I mean, this school system, you know, in the uh, Omaha area and stuff, really ain't dealing with it as far as, uh, you know, intervention. Because if a kid had a gun, you know, they're kicking him out of school. I mean, yeah, maybe he should suffer some consequences, but you're kicking him out of school, he's on his way for that other gun, and he ain't getting an education. While schools are trying to keep guns out of classrooms, police and community groups are trying to get guns off the streets. Here in the property room of the Omaha Police Department, there are thousands of guns that have been confiscated or surrendered through gun buyback programs. But with a new handgun produced every 20 seconds, teens are having no trouble getting their hands on the weapon of their choice. 38 sawed-off shotguns, 22s, 9mm, Mac-10s. You can get guns anywhere. It's easy. To get. Anywhere. You can get it on the black market. You can just have someone that can get a gun, get a gun, and report stolen. You, there's a lot of ways. You can go and, you know, you go in a house and they got a gun in there. You go look in the closet. I'll tell you what gun the problem, is, right the problem in society today is it's easier to get a gun than it is to get an education. If you know the right kid, you can get a gun just like you go to the store and buy a pop. I mean, it's that simple. Guns range from 20 to 400 bucks, and they're easy to get. You can buy a handgun. I mean, like this gun right here, you could buy a handgun for like 30, 40 bucks. bucks. This thing right here is a Mac 10. You know, I got it from a homeboy. 
According to a 1992 report by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, there are currently 922 gun manufacturers in the U.S. Production of firearms jumped 42% between 1985 and 1989, leaving over 200 million guns in circulation. While the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution has always protected the right to bear arms, today there are almost enough guns to arm every man, woman, and child. We don't got own the stores. We don't make them. Y'all got the factory well, stores. Me and bring them in. You bring them here. You and your boys bring them here. Now we got them. Now y'all scared. How easy is it to get a gun as a teenager in Louisiana? Easy as you can buy a can. Give me some specifics. Like, I mean, are there stores you can get them at? Are there street, certain street corners? Are there certain people you know? Call shops. Um, gun shops. Stores. Walmart. You can get a gun at Walmart? But you don't you have to be 18 to buy a gun at Walmart? Yeah. But you're only 15, so you get an 18 year old friend to go in and get it for you? Yeah. In the suburbs of New Orleans, Walmart, the same store that refuses to carry stickered albums, Nirvana's In Utero, and Howard Stern's best-selling book, does sell guns and everything else for your home. So, with a hidden camera, we brought members of the KC mob to find out if it's really that easy to buy a gun. Take six out. One ninety nine. Uh huh. Yeah, that's cheap. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with this one. After filling out a questionnaire and showing a driver's license, the KC mob walked out with a deadly new toy. You know, there's a problem when it's easier to get guns and get high than easier for it to get someone to care a little bit and just to help things out to make things better. In fact, there are people who care about fighting the problem of youth violence, and we'll profile some of them when we come back. By the way, the gun we purchased at Walmart was immediately turned in to the New Orleans Police Department. The teenager behind me is fighting for his life. He's got brain coming out of his head. Statistics show that gun violence is mainly an inner city problem, but to the emergency room staff here at Charity Hospital in New Orleans, death is not a black or white issue. They have to deal with the consequences of gun crazy kids almost every hour. It takes only a second to pull the trigger, but it's going to take a lot longer to solve this problem. 19-year-old Eddie Matos will probably spend the rest of his life in this New York hospital. Paralyzed from the neck down by a single bullet, Eddie breathes with the help of a respirator. A far cry from the life he led when at 16, he was a lieutenant in a Brooklyn drug ring. When you were renting yachts for parties and having lots of girls and making $5,000 a week, did you ever think this would happen to you? Uh, never thought it would happen. What's going too good and easy for me to think anything would ever happen. When Eddie heard about the fatal shooting at Jefferson, his old school, he decided something had to be done and wrote a letter to Mayor Dinkins, prompting the formation of the Power Group. And then that's when they decided that they should have a bunch of gunshot wound patients go out and talk to high schools about stopping the violence. It doesn't take more than one bullet to destroy your whole life. You know, and once you pull a gun, if you pull that trigger, that's one thought that you can't retrieve. It affects us because, you know, we're like firsthand hearing what happens directly out of violence. But when you go back out in the real world and, you know, everybody don't have that same kind of knowledge to be at right here, right now. They looking at me now being in this situation. They don't want to be like this because it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. In its efforts to fight gun violence, the government has proposed, amongst other measures, a mandatory waiting period for handgun purchases and increasing ammunition taxes. But little can be done as long as the Second Amendment is interpreted as guaranteeing the right to bear arms. You know, they want to make a gun control law and just get it out of the picture. But where's the people control? Where's the counseling? Where's the programs for people? There is a program in New Orleans helping this 15-year-old boy who recently lost his big brother to gunfire. Thank about him every day. Thank about my brother every day. A peer counselor from Project Last helps Theron and his friends work through their grief and also provides them with guidance. You know, a part of you is gone. You, know, you can't see it anymore, but you still have to carry on. 
with what you have set for yourself. All we can do is just remember the thing that we that he did with us. And just hope, you know, we don't have to deal with the same thing again. You know, I can turn my positive energy into energy that they can see positive because it's coming from a pair, it's coming from somebody that they can uh, relate to. Peer mediation programs like the one at New York's Robeson High teach students the skills to intervene in arguments before guns are drawn. Our job is to like drag the whole story out, get everything out and open so we'll know. And then if you get everything out, the other person might go, well, I didn't know she felt like that, or I didn't know he felt like that. And everything, most of the time, is resolved. McDonough 38 Elementary School in New Orleans starts young, using the same ideas in a resolving conflict creatively program. Why do you think that this conflict program is necessary in this school? Because it can help a lot of children out that when they grow up not to kill, just um, walk away and don't fight. They got to fight, but just don't go get a gun and kill somebody. Frustrated people around the country are taking their anger onto the streets with marches and rallies, trying to reclaim their communities from the grip of drugs and violence. Tell me what Youth Move is and what it's trying to do to combat the problem of kids and gunfire. We are a bunch of young people who won't accept drugs in our neighborhood. We don't accept guns in our neighborhood. We don't accept the 40 ounce and the Philly bun in our brother's hands. We don't accept that. So we out there day in and day out with this crusade against violence.